What actually happened was that Claude did actually order a pizza. But in this video, I want to do something a little differently. In this video, I want to talk about what actually is it and then how does it work and how can we write our own code? Well, it's Friday night and the pizza's just arrived. There's nothing particularly unusual about that, except in this case, because I didn't order this pizza. Claude ordered this pizza. Let me show you how. Okay. Um, all of that genuinely did happen, but just a couple of days ago, these pizza boxes are now empty. That's not the point. What actually happened was that Claude did actually order a pizza. I prompted it with order two pepperoni pizzas. We'll, we'll take a look at this prompt in a minute. Um, and it took control of my Uber Eats account and <laughs> ordered the pizza. So how did I do that? Well, I used Claude Sonic 3.5 version 2 with computer use. And a lot of people are making videos about computer use, which is super cool. But in this video, I want to do something a little differently. In this video, I want to talk about what actually is it and then how does it work and how can we write our own code? Because that's what I did in order to order this pizza. And then at the end of this video, I'll play Play back the full unedited screen recording of Claude ordering that pizza in real time so that you actually get to see what that looked like. Okay, let's actually start off with what actually is this? What is everybody talking about? Well, it's Claude Sonnet 3.5 version 2. So it's a new version of well, their flagship model, which is super capable, it's got lots of reasoning capabilities, can do lots of generation, can write code, can do all of this kind of stuff. But it has something a little different this time around, and that's a beta mode. So we can actually send a flag to the model to say, we want to have a go with your beta capabilities. And one of those is computer use. Now, what is that? Well, in the past with Claude Sonnet 3.5, it's, it's a multimodal model. So you can send images and you can send text into the model and it will do generation based on that. So you could take a screenshot of a computer and you could say, what is this? And it would say, that's a screenshot of a computer. And if you'd say, how can I launch an application? It would say, well, you should probably click on the application. Now things are a little different because we can enable this computer use tool and we can send in the screenshot of a computer and say, how can we launch this application? And it can actually tell us with pixel precision where to click in that image. And what that means is that we can create some tools to link to this generation and actually control the computer. So let's see how that actually works. If I jump here into my notebook environment, I've got some code which will show us the super, super basics of how to call this from the model. I will then include all of this code, code and all of the code that I actually used to um, order the pizza in a link in the description beneath this video. Um, so let's start off. I'm going to import the Boto3 library here, um, which is the SDK for AWS, which allows me to be able to use this uh, client object for Bedrock runtime. So the Anthropic model, of course, is available through Amazon Bedrock. That's where I'm going to be accessing it. And in my environment here, I've got my access keys so that I can get access to the models. Um, and I've also enabled it inside of my environment already. So I've got my client object here for Amazon Bedrock. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to load a screenshot as a base64 string. Now let me show you the screenshot. It's going to be included in the repository as well. And here it is, super simple, but it is small, right? So it's 800 by 600, and that's for a couple of reasons. Mostly, I don't want to overblow the context size on the model. I want to be able to pass in multiple screenshots ultimately. Um, and so the documentation also will point you towards using smaller screen resolutions or at least doing some kind of scaling. I have a super tiny monitor on my desktop here, and that's where this screenshot came from. It's 800 by 600. So let me go back. Um, let me run this cell. And now I've got this base64 encoded uh, string, which contains that screenshot. And um, now let's send this to 
Claude Sonnet 3.5 version 2. Um, now, if I just scroll down just for a second, you'll see how we're going to do that. We're going to call the Bedrock Runtime Client Invoke Model, and we're going to pass in the body, and also then the model ID, which is the particular model we're working with. Let's see how we construct the body. And we'll work backwards for this. So here is the body construction. Now, this is pretty typical for a payload that you would send into the Claude model family. Um, so, but but there are a couple of differences here. Um, the first difference to point out is this uh, anthropic beta parameter that we have here. So we actually pass in that we want to use computer use. We had this, this date format. This is how it is written. This is what you need to write. This turns on the beta capabilities of the inference code which is wrapped around this model in the service endpoint. So that's what we've got. Um, system prompt is pretty basic here. You are a helpful assistant. I'm not doing anything fancy in this particular piece of code. Um, then we've got uh, max tokens, top K, stop sequences, temperature, usual kinds of stuff. Then we've got the messages. So this is our um, conversational history that we're going to pass in and tools. Let's go and have a look at the definition of both of those things. First of all, let's have a look at tools. And here is the definition of tools. I'm scrolling backwards here. A little bit unusual, but sort of makes sense, right? Um, and this is where things are a little bit different. So when we do tool usage in the past, again, with the anthropic payload um, syntax, we would define our tools ourselves, as in our bits and pieces of code. We would define what the payloads for those tools look like, and we would pass that in here into the tool specifications for the Claude model. But this one's a bit different because the tool specification is built into the beta version of the model already. So all we have to do is say that the type is this specific string here, computer underscore 2024-1022. Um, it has a name of computer. And then we pass in these parameters, which is the height and the width of the screenshots that we're going to pass in, the display screenshots that we're going to pass in. That's all we need to do. Everything else is taken care for us um, on the model side, at the service side. Now, that doesn't mean that it's going to move our mouse around for us. Of course, what it means is it will pass us back instructions of how we can move the mouse and what we need to type into our computer environment. So we still have the um, execution side of the tools to do. We'll look at that in more detail in just a moment. So that's the tool definition, and it's just pointing to the beta version, the, the tool that's been built into the beta version of this model. So we've got that defined. And then let's just look at the message format then. And guess what? This message format is exactly the same as it's always been for anthropic models. So we have the role, user, we've got content, and we've got a couple of different things we're passing in. We've got some text, which includes our prompt, essentially, which is open Firefox. So if you remember that screenshot, it's got Firefox in there as a little icon. We want it to open Firefox. Um, and then we pass in the image as the base64 encoded string. And this is exactly the same as we'd have done with previous versions of Sonnet or Opus or Haiku, which are multimodal models. But in this particular case, it's going to see that and use the tool on that this is pretty exciting. So let's press Run on that to define everything. We've got our message defined. We've got our tools defined. And they are now inside of this body, which is a JSON string of all of this information. So fairly typical of the way that you would interact with a Claude model normally. Now let's scroll down and run this code. So we've said before we're going to run invoke model. We're going to pass this body in. And then we're going to get our body response out. And we do that by getting a read or calling read on the body object. If you've worked with the invoke model endpoint before, this is all very normal stuff. And then we're going to grab out of that the response body and print it out to the screen in a readable kind of format. So let's do that. Let's press run. We have to wait just a couple of seconds for that inference to come back. And there we go. Here's our response. So if we take a look at that, it's got, um, what have we got here? This content here is really the thing that we care most about. So the content comes back with some text. I'll help you open Firefox. I can see the Firefox icon on the desktop. I'll move the cursor there and click on it. All right, so it's it's setting out its intentions of what it wants to do. And of course, because of the way tool works, 
tool use works with generative models, what it now needs to do is send us the instructions for what it wants to do. So it says it wants to do tool use, and it wants to use the computer tool. So when we're talking about computer use, it's the computer tool. We saw that and we defined that before. And it has a particular action and a payload here for its input. So we've got action of move mouse. Uh, sorry, mouse move, um, and then the coordinates that it wants to move the mouse to. And obviously, these coordinates are based off of the coordinates of that screenshot, that 800 by 600 screenshot that we sent it in. That's what it's going to do. The other things which are kind of useful here is a stop reason of tool use. So when we're writing our code to work with this, we will look for the stop reason of tool use. If we see that, we know we can go and grab this payload and do something with it. And of course, my full code, which ordered the pizzas, definitely does this. But for the sake of this simple test, we're going to do this by hand. So let's take the whole of this content because we want to copy that. What we want to do is we want to pass this back to the model when we're doing our conversational history. Because remember, these models don't contain state. They don't hold state. And when we say we've moved the mouse, we need to pass back the entire conversation in as we do that. So let's grab that. I've copied that. And you may have seen this already, but I've got this um, ready to go down here, another messages block. And I'm going to pass in the response we got. So here's the same initial request we made. Here is a space for where we can add the response. So let me just paste that in there. So I've just pasted in the content block from the response we've got back from the model. Um, it's here. Let's just make that a little a bit nicer in terms of its indentation. OK, that's better. Um, and of course, it's asking us to move the mouse. So what we would need to do is pick that up, move the mouse, and then report back to the model that that's what we've done. And what we're doing here is we're creating an agent, because this is a behind the scenes conversation which is happening uh, as it works through the different steps that it needs to do, in this case, to open Firefox. Nothing more complicated than that. So let's imagine for a moment that I wrote some code that moved the mouse and that that was successful. We're going to report that back now to the model. And so here, I've got some basics here already. So where did it want to move the mouse to? 735.65. So I was almost right. Let's go 65. Um, and we need a tool use ID. So we pass back the tool use ID that it gave us just to show that these things are related. And we'll put that in there. And so what we're doing here is we're manually putting together the conversation that needs to happen for an agentic workflow for computer use. Um, so this is our response. And then basically just saying the mouse has moved. I don't think that this particularly matters. We just need to respond without an error. So if we run that, and look, we're basically going to construct everything again, super inefficient code. But I just want to lay it out from top to bottom so it's easy to see. So let's run that so it's defined and basically run this again. And now let's see what happens. So we're basically saying to it, yeah, we've moved the mouse. But you notice that what it was saying before was it also needs to do a click. And so it hasn't done that yet. And that's the response we get back now. The response we get back now is, OK, now you've moved it. Now perform a left click. And this is how it will go on and on and on until it's completed the action that it needed. Now, left click inside of a Mac OS environment, that's probably not going to cut it. That's just going to click on the icon once. It really needs to double click on it. So we have some prompt engineering we need to do to explain, well, you're in a Mac environment, and this is how it needs to work. Let's now jump into the code which I used to order the pizza that you've got inside of the repository that you've cloned if you click the link below in the description beneath this video. And we can see how I actually did this. And let's just stop for one moment and just consider what we're doing here. We're actually using generative AI to control my computer. My computer has access to all kinds of things. so. This isn't a good idea, and you definitely shouldn't run this on any computer that's got access to anything important. And honestly, most things are important. So maybe just don't run this code. Look to see how it works and how you might be able to adapt it for whatever it is that you want to do. Be super careful. This is generative AI. It's experimental, and your computer is precious. So with that said, let's carry on.
So we start off here in main.py um, and in here we basically are going to call on our agent object and we'll go and have a look at that in a moment and we pass into the agent object this initial payload and you can see this is actually the prompt which I used to order the pizza. So I said use Uber Eats, select two pepperoni pizzas, put them in the cart, then check out, use, uh, use the user that is currently logged in and that was what I found I needed to do in order to get this to work. I'll be honest and straight with you here the Claude model doesn't really want to log into things and it doesn't really want to do things that are going to have any kind of financial consequence because it's a beta thing I guess and they're just experimenting around with it at the moment but if you prompt your way around it you can get it to do all kinds of things. Um, here is another um, example of a prompt you can send in so I say open Firefox and search for an image of a puppy which is an easier thing to do and doesn't result in any financial gain or loss or pizza arriving either for that matter. So you can see how we're going to send in the instructions that we have. And you'll notice here that we're not actually sending in a screenshot of the initial state because you don't actually need to. This agent, this tool will actually, if it's not provided with an image of the screen, the first thing it will do is go and grab an image of the screen. And we can look at a text history, a chat history of one of these in just a moment. Um, but let's go into uh, source and I go into agent and have a look at this. Here is our agent code and I'll step through this um, and you can see how it relates to all of the other code in your own time because you've got this code you can just pull it apart for your own use so let's take a look here so um, the first thing we've got is the agent object itself which is obviously going to give us our client object and the model ID and access to the tools itself the computer tools I've got out in another class so we have this invoke agent and when we call invoke agent we're going to send in that payload and we just saw that a moment ago which was that instruction that we had um, and it's going to do a few key things here so it's going to get the tools which are available it's going to prepare the anthropic payload and then it's going to invoke the bedrock model so everything that we've just done by hand essentially it's going to do that in this structure here so getting the available tools well that's exactly what we've just seen obviously this time I'm programmatically adding in the actual um, resolution of the screen that we're working with so that it's portable code um, we've got the prepare anthropic payload again we saw this just a moment ago this isn't doing anything different um, and then we got our invoke bedrock model which is doing very similar things here so it's going to go and call invoke model but if we go back a second to invoke agent what happens here is that when we get our response back we then process this response and this is where the agentic workflow starts to come in so let's go down to process response response and well you probably guess pretty much what happens here what happens is we go through and we go and grab the content out we update our message so that we're maintaining our conversational history and um, we're looking for the stop reason and if the stop reason is tool use then we handle the tool by passing that content on to our tool handler this is just agentic workflow tool usage 101 nothing particularly fancy here. Um, tool usage is going to go in, it's going to look to see if it's the computer tool which is the only tool which is supported and then if it is it's going to execute computer action. Here's computer actions and here are all the actions which are supported in this code. So taking a screenshot, pressing a key, uh, typing something, moving the mouse, left click, right click, middle click, double click, um, left click drag and getting the cursor position. It could be that we are requested of more things than this with this tool I'm exploring and this is what I found so far. Um, and obviously the handler then will go off and call all of these different handler functions to do the job that we were talking about. So go take a screenshot and we've got a computer object which can do that or go and press a key or go and type something etc etc. Just quickly then if we have a look inside of tools you can see computer <clears throat> and here I'm using a couple of different libraries so the py auto gui, py auto gui um, and pineput 
PYN, pine, pine put. So one for getting screenshots, one for moving the mouse and keyboard. This is tested and working on a Mac OS machine, and this is what I needed for this. Um, and these functions are super, super basic functions for doing things like moving the mouse um, and doing the clicks and all that kind of stuff. Um, performing different kinds of mouse clicks here. I got these sleep statements at the end because I found it just made it better. It's super gross code, I know, but it just made it perform better for this for this demo anyway. And so that's how all of the code works. And if we were to take this and press play, then we get our agentic workflow and it flows through performing the action we asked for. Here is an example in this repository of a conversational history for Open Firefox and search for an image of a puppy. And you can see here, um, it passes in, it then says, Okay, I'll help you open up Firefox. Um, to do that, I'm going to take a screenshot. So this particular agentic workflow that we've got here doesn't start with a screenshot. And so it then uh, takes the screenshot and passes it in. Let me just turn word wrap off so the screenshots are smaller for us. So it's passed in the screenshot and we pass that in as the user. Um, the assistant then says, okay, I see the Firefox icon. I'll double click on it to open. And we have prompted it here to know that it's using a Mac OS environment um, and that's in the system prompt you'll be able to see that actually if you go into agent and into system prompt here this is the prompting that I found works for my use cases you can have a play around with this and um, if we just go back um, so yes I'll double click on it to open and um, so it then uh, we uh, it so the first thing it does is to move the mouse even though it says we're going to double click um, it needs to move the mouse which is what it asked for so we say sure we've done that for you and on it goes double click uh, sure we did the double click and on and on and on and on um, with this agentic workflow all of this is happening off the back of one prompt from us which is to get a picture of the puppy um, all of this conversation is an agentic workflow conversation happening in the background um, okay so let's take a look now at real time then the screen recording of when the Claude 3.5 model ordered a pizza for me and you can see here it going through the motions I'll leave this with you and you can watch it all the way through as much as you want you can skip through it um, but I will call out right towards the end when Claude decides that it's actually going to update the preferences I have in Firefox not just use the browser and remember as we're doing this this is Claude operating my computer it's not just operating a web browser it can do anything on my computer and that's one reason out of many why you really should think very carefully before doing anything like this this is running on your computer you need to be super careful and maybe don't do this and run this in a safer environment instead anyway i hope you found this video useful i hope you found it exciting i had a lot of fun putting it together if you like this please do give it a thumbs up if you want to see more videos like this then you know what to do subscribe to this channel i'll leave you now in the capable hands of claude 3.5 sonnet version 2 ordering me a pizza and until the next time i will see you later ladies and gentlemen the captain has turned off the fasten seatbelt sign